do you have a sense yet in your in your research or investigation as to how exactly this got elevated from the local incident where, you know, like, as you said, it went through the courts there and just kind of got a uh, run through and it was done away with. Um, how did this get elevated? Are you, have you found anything to, to show why this piqued the interest of the DOJ and the feds? Well, we faced something similar when Obama came into office, President Obama came into office. His DOJ started doing investigations of pro-lifers at abortion facilities. And so I can only presume that there was interest at Maine Justice. And we learned after, the, uh, after Mark was arrested in that outrageous and reckless raid at his home, we learned that a, a senior staffer from Maine Justice out of Washington, D.C. will be litigating the case. And we realized that was someone that was actually there uh, as part of the grand jury proceedings. So this has been run out of Washington from the beginning not out of Philadelphia. And these cases are almost always run by the local U.S. attorney. So this is something that comes from the highest levels of the Department of Justice. And certainly you couldn't have a low-level person authorize a 20-plus federal agent raid at a peaceful man's home without the, whether it's the attorney general himself who knew or one of his top lieutenants who approved it, uh, certainly this goes up to the highest levels. The FBI retracted a leaked memo that said agents should look for possible ties between Catholics and far-right white nationalists. The Bureau told the Catholic News Agency they retracted the memo because it didn't, quote, meet the FBI's exacting standards. The excuse is curious, though, especially considering we are only finding out about the Bureau's newfound fear of radical Catholics because of a whistleblower. He's with us now. Kyle Serafin, former FBI agent, indefinitely suspended in April of 2022 over other whistleblowing. Um, Kyle, it's good to see you. We appreciate it. Uh, help us understand this. this. This is just the Richmond office, right? Is, is there some group of radical Catholics out there that the, the FBI folks in Richmond know about? No, I don't think so, Leland. Um, so this is a document. It's called a uh, finished intelligence product, the main awareness product. And it's written by a intelligence analyst whose full-time job is to essentially write term papers for the Bureau and put them out there for the rest of the term paper writers to look at and then decide whether or not there's there's that same threat, you know, the, the threat picture that they're analyzing in their AOR, or their area of operations. Um, if you read this document all the way through, it, it reads like a woke activist is trying to, um, to influence something. It doesn't sound like they've ever met a Catholic. I'm a Catholic. I've been a Catholic 41 years. And uh, I don't think that uh, there's such a thing as a radical traditionalist Catholic, especially in differentiation to a traditionalist Catholic. I just don't think that exists. But it is what is written about there. And you can read through. They talk yeah, about things I like abortion look, I rights. A, I don't have a PhD in comparative religion. I barely passed the class. But I, I knew enough to, as I read through, and, and having gone to Mass a few times, that, that a number of the things they were talking about in there just didn't seem to match up with, with radicalism in, in America. It did get me thinking, though, about President Biden's speech, uh, September 1 of 2022, about radicalism in America. Take a listen. Too much of what's happening in our country today is not normal. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. The FBI is a bureaucracy, as much as we want to think of it uh, as this sort of uh, incredibly qualified and uh, organization beyond reproach. How much of this is just agents and bosses playing politics? Well, it's, it's really the fact that the FBI acts as an intelligence agency and the people that they've recruited to do it are very intellectual types. So they're writing, you know, academic rhetoric that follows the lines of what you see in academia. Um, so that's really the big piece of it. It's not as much a law enforcement agency as people would think. It is intelligence agency with law enforcement capability. And they even list that as their priorities when you when you look into what's called the Diog, which is the uh, the FBI's operation manual. So it, it's pretty straightforward what's going on here. Like I said, this is kind of a woke activist take. Mm. Uh, we're talking about abortion rights, LGBTQ things. These are not um, these are not outside of mainstream Christianity, let alone Catholicism. Like that's pretty much what Christians believe that that these things are not uh, in line with their faith. All right, Kyle, thank you very much. Uh, keep letting us know when you, when you find this stuff. It's fascinating. Mr. Chairman, uh, Attorney General Garland, let, let me just ask you, d does your department have a problem with anti-Catholic bias? Uh, our department um, is, uh, 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 protects all religions um, and all ideologies. It does not have 
uh, any uh, bias against any religion of any kind. Well, you could have surprised me because given the resources that you are expending and the apparently intelligence assets that you are deploying against Catholics, it appears, and other people of faith while simultaneously turning a blind eye while people are executed gang style in the streets of our cities, including in my home state, I, your answer frankly surprises me. Let's talk about the Mark Hout case, for example. You've been asked about this already today, and frankly, your answers really astound me. This is a case where a Catholic pro-life demonstrator, father, was accused of disorderly conduct in front of an abortion center. The local prosecutor, the Philadelphia district attorney, who is a Democrat, a liberal, very progressive, declined to prosecute. There was a private suit that got dismissed. And then after all of that, your Justice Department sent between 20 and 30 armed agents in the early morning hours to the Houck's private residence to arrest this guy after he had offered to turn himself in voluntarily. Here's the photo once again. You can see the long guns. You can see the ballistic shields. You can see that they're wearing bulletproof vests. Why did the Justice Department do this? Why did you send 20 to 30 SWAT-style agents and a SWAT-style team to this guy's house when everybody else had declined to prosecute and he'd offered to turn himself in? Determinations of how to make arrests under arrest warrants are made based uh, by the tactical operators um, in the uh, district. They are not but you surely looked into it by this point, right? They you, you know the answer. Surely. They, all I know is what uh, the FBI has said, which is that they made the decisions on the ground as to what was safest and easiest. So you do not agree with your description of what happened on the scene. You don't agree with my description. I'm pointing out what the photo is. There are agents here who have long guns and ballistic shields. Let's take a look at the hardened criminals that your Justice Department sent these armed agents to go terrorize on that morning. Here they are. Here they are at mass. Here's the seven children with Mr. Houck and his wife. In this early morning, they were all at home. Mrs. Houck has said repeatedly the children were screaming. They feared for their lives. You've got these agents demanding that he come out. They've got the guns, she said, pointing at the house and at them. He has offered to turn himself in. And this is who you go to terrorize. What's really interesting to me is this seems to directly contradict your own memorandum about the use of force at the Justice Department. You say officers may use only the force that is objectively reasonable to effectively control an incident. Are you telling me that in your opinion as Attorney General, it was objectively necessary to use 20 or 30 SWAT-style agents with long guns and ballistic shields for these people? What I'm saying is that decisions about how to go about this were made on the ground by FBI agents. So you're saying you don't know? I'm, I'm saying what I just said. That Which is that you're abdicating responsibility? I'm not abdicating responsibility. Then give me the answer. Is Do you think in your opinion, you are the Attorney General of the United States, you are in charge of the Justice Department, and yes, sir, you are responsible. The so F give me an answer. The FBI does not agree with your description. I'm not asking about the FBI. You are the Attorney General. Give me your answer. Do you think that it was objectively reasonable and they followed your guidelines in sending 20 to 30 armed agents to terrorize these people? Yes or no? The facts I have, which are those presented by the FBI, are not consistent with your description. So you think it was reasonable? I'm saying the facts are not as you describe. What, that the children weren't there? That there, wasn't, that there weren't long guns there? Facts. That there weren't agents? What, wasn't, what, what do you dispute? What's the factual premise you dispute? FBI Be specific. FBI said they don't agree with your description of... Be um, specific. They don't agree with what? Of, of how many agents, of the agents who were there, and of what their roles were. They don't agree. Do you That's know the jury in this case acquitted Mr. Houck? As I'm sure you're aware. Do you know how long it took him? I, I am aware, and we respect the decision of the jury. Do you know how long it took him? I don't know. One hour. One hour. Philadelphia District Attorney declines to prosecute. The private suit's dismissed. You use an unbelievable show of force with guns that I just note liberals usually decry. We're supposed to hate long, long guns and assault-style weapons. You're happy to deploy them against Catholics and innocent children. Happy to.
and then you haul him into court and a jury acquits him in one hour. I just suggest to you that that is a disgraceful performance by your Justice Department and a disgraceful use of resources. Free speech and religious freedom under fire again in Canada. This time it's not pastors getting arrested over COVID-19 restrictions, but a 16-year-old high school student. Josh Alexander shared his thoughts about transgender ideology at St. Joseph's Catholic High School in Renfrew, Ontario. Officials suspended him from class for the rest of the school year, and when he showed up to class for the second semester, he was promptly arrested by two police officers. Well, here to share what happened is Josh Alexander. Josh, it's good to talk with you. So what happened in class? What did you say that got you in trouble? Yeah, thank you for having me on. Um, so the, uh, the whole issue started uh, back in October, I suppose. Um, I had moved to the Catholic board, and uh, female students in the school informed me that uh, male students were using the female washrooms, and they were concerned by this. Um, so I decided to talk about that. Um, I voiced my beliefs, and uh, I expressed concern to the principal. Um, a female student also expressed concern to the principal, and we were both ignored. Uh, so at that point, I decided to organize a protest outside to uh, shed some uh, light on what was going on in, behind closed doors. And uh, they ended up suspending me indefinitely two days before the, uh, the actual protests. They gave me uh, an exclusion order. Um, this exclusion order was completely unlawful and discriminatory, and uh, so I decided to um, show up to school um, regardless of the exclusion order, and at that point, they hit me with a trespassing notice and another suspension. I waited all of that out until the end of the semester, lost four of my credits, and uh, by the beginning, next, uh, beginning of the next semester, um, with my lawyer, I informed them that I would return to school and continue to adhere to my religious beliefs. Not long into that time, I was uh, brought to the office, the principal blocked the exit, and uh, two police officers ended up uh, entering the building. And when they told me to leave, I explained to them the situation, how I was only in that situation because of my uh, beliefs and that I uh, exercised my fundamental freedoms and that I wasn't gonna leave on a request. So uh, they ended up arresting me and they charged me with trespassing. Were you hateful or disrespectful? What tone did you take when you said what you did? No, no, I wasn't, I wasn't disrespectful at all. I, uh, I voiced my beliefs, my sincere beliefs, and uh, I never directed at a specific trans student that was doing anything. Um, I don't contone their behavior, but I also sympathize with them because they're a victim of our society um, and our education system and our the terrible parents that have encouraged and pushed that on their children. I was called a racist, a sexist, a bigot. Uh, by like staff and students were involved in this stuff, and uh, yeah, I just continued to voice my beliefs and. Uh, I had ended up getting me arrested. There was conditions they wanted me to agree to in order to return to school. As a Christian, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to accept the falsehood. I'm not going to go along with the mainstream narrative that is completely contrary to God's natural order. So um, I couldn't agree to those conditions, and uh, that's where I'm at at this point. Were you actually taken to the police station and booked, put in jail? Uh, no, they actually they charged me from the cruiser. And then they ended up uh, releasing me to my brother. Okay, and what was the reaction to your parents having their son arrested? Um, I doubt they're very happy about that. Uh, I mean, they, they recognized that uh, all I had done was express my beliefs, and uh, they, weren't, they weren't too happy with the response from the Ontario Provincial Police or the school board. So they were supportive of their son expressing his faith in a Catholic school. Yes. Uh, imagine that. Uh, the principal declined to do an interview with a reporter from the National Post saying he couldn't comment about your case because of the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. That prevents him from talking about specific student cases. So what would you like to see happen now, Josh? Well, we're taking, uh, we're taking my school to the Human Rights Commission. Um, I would, uh, we also just had a uh, presentation um, at the school board meeting and uh, we got to uh, well I had a representative from uh, parents as first educators uh, they got to give a presentation and explain where we were coming from a bit and offered some uh, resolutions I don't know where that'll go 
but uh hopefully we can find a resolution and uh move on and that uh the the safety of our female students would be taken a little more seriously and uh the, our freedom of expression would be uh defended rather than attacked by our education system and, and the freedom of religion your belief yeah. uh in a catholic Absolutely. school so tell us about the petition you've got going yeah we've got a uh we've got a petition you can find it at libertycoalitioncanada.com and uh that, that's probably we've got some plans that we uh we haven't yet uh, released but the, that'll come in handy so if you, if you want to support what we're doing just go ahead and sign that petition Okay, and, and finally, Josh, how important is your Christian faith to you? Tell us about your relationship with Christ. Yeah, it's it's incredibly important. Um, I probably wouldn't be here today uh, if it wasn't for it. And uh, I, I recognize that our, uh, our freedom of religion is under attack. And uh, like I said earlier, God's natural order is under attack. The, the, uh, the family unit in general is uh being attacked from every angle and they're starting with the youth um you can see it not only in the education system but even what they're doing with the drake queen story time hours i was actually arrested the day after um at the school i was arrested twice in two days um because i was uh quoting scripture um outside of a uh, drake queen story time and uh, the police arrested me for that and uh charged me again so it, I would say my my faith plays a fairly large role in it. I'm not going to silence myself. Uh, we're told to go into the world and preach the gospel, and that's what I'm going to continue to do. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll see where that goes. And there are consequences in a fallen world when you do that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Josh Alexander, all the best to you. Thank you for sharing your time and thoughts. God bless you. Thank you. God bless. I notice a pattern, though. The FBI field office in Richmond on the 23rd of January of this year issued a memorandum in which they advocated for, and I quote, the exploration of new avenues for tripwire and source development against traditionalist Catholics, it's their, their language, including those who favor the Latin mass. Attorney General, are you cultivating sources and spies in Latin mass parishes and other Catholic parishes around the country? No, the Justice Department does not do that. It does not um, um, do investigations based on religion. I saw the document you have. What did you do about it? It's appalling. It's appalling. I'm in complete agreement with you. I understand that the FBI has withdrawn it and is now looking into how this could ever have happened. How did it happen? That's what they're looking into. But I'm totally in agreement with you. That document is appalling. I'll tell you how it happened. The this memoranda, which is supposed to be intelligent, cites extensively the Southern Poverty Law Center, which goes on to identify all of these different Catholics as being part of hate groups. Is, is this how the FBI, under your direction and leadership, is, is this how they do their intelligence work? They look, they look at left-wing advocacy groups to target Catholics? Is this what's going on? I mean, clearly it is. How is this happening? The FBI is not targeting Catholics, and, and as I've said, this is an uh, an inappropriate memorandum, and it doesn't reflect the methods that the FBI is supposed to be using, should not be relying on any single organization without doing its own work. Let me just ask you, as my time expires here, a very direct question. How, how many informants do you have in Catholic churches across America? I don't know, and I don't believe we have any informants aimed at Catholic churches. We have a rule against uh, investigations based on First Amendment um, activity, and uh, uh, Catholic churches are obviously uh, First Amendment activity. Well, but I don't know the specific answer to you, you don't know the specifics of anything, it seems, but apparently on your watch, this Justice Department is targeting Catholics, targeting people of faith, specifically for their faith views. And Mr. Attorney General, I'll just say to you, it's a disgrace.